Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast for another Authors Tuesday. Uh, today I'm delighted to be joined by another great author, uh, Margaret Grant. Um, she's another Irish author, so um, I'm, I'm very excited to be, t- to be talking to her. She's, she's in France at the moment, so uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to come into the podcast tonight, Margaret. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, happy to be here. Brilliant, brilliant. And would you like to maybe start the podcast off just to tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what books you have out there at the moment would be brilliant to start? Okay, so will I start with the book? Yes, yeah, I'll start with the book. This is it. Yes. Um, it's probably backwards. I don't know what it is. No, I can see but, it perfect um, 311, yeah. Okay, so the title is 311 and it's a novel. 311 refers to the day March the 11th. Mm. in 2011 and uh, so it opens in Tokyo on March the 11th 2011 when Japan was hit by a very massive earthquake and Mm. uh, so there's five there's kind of five protagonists in it all of whom are based in Tokyo Um, uh, so they're not so the the earthquake affected affected Tokyo but it had a worse effect further north so they're not personally too badly affected by the earthquake. I mean, they're badly shaken, but, you know, they just, uh, you know, in, in their homes, they just lose some cups and glasses and things like that. They don't, you know, mm. they're grand. Yeah. But I suppose that the experience shakes them and they uh, end up like, it's kind of, it becomes a catalyst in their lives that they, they um, their lives kind of take, different turns, you know, from, mm-hmm. from where they were headed. So it's like this catalyzed, catalyst in the lives of the, the five, five women who are friends and they're in a book club together. And uh, so they kind of each get their section in the novel. And then in the final part of the novel, back together again. So uh, that's how it works. It's kind of like um, told in six different sections where each okay. of the main characters have their own story yeah 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 okay and you were saying that you were you were saying you, you won an award for that so that was great that you won, I an, award did. For your, for I won an award um it's yeah i won an award it was called the premio emotion which i think think means the special emotion prize in a in um the city of catholica in italy uh, a literary prize they have so um the book was published by a uh, by an Italian based publisher, so I, that's why it was entered in an award in Italy, which I might have heard of otherwise, I suppose. So um, yeah, so that was a nice. Isn't it? It's great to get 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 yourself out there with a recognition. It yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because you know when um, you're hobby or your passion or whatever it's not um it's not very sociable and it's not necessarily good for your health so it's sort of a strange thing to be doing in your spare time so I think it's nice to get a bit of recognition and a bit of encouragement I suppose to keep going yeah Uh, yeah not to exactly put it to one side yeah and have you always been a writer yourself Margaret where did the journey begin for yourself uh no, not not always. No, definitely not. Um, I've always been a reader, um, and I think often I kind of, kind of wonder. I wonder, could I do that? I wonder, could I write something that people would be interested to to read? Um, and then I suppose when I I lived in Tokyo for eleven years, so um, when I was there a um, few years in, anyway, I remember seeing. Um, creative writing class advertised and um, it was was in English so I thought why don't I why don't do that and uh, you know just one evening a week kind of thing and so I joined that class and enjoyed it and the following year went to another class Um, yeah so it was just something I did kind of occasionally and Mm. but gradually I got more and more into it and I suppose what was it 2014 I did a master's in creative writing in 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 England and um yeah it was then that I started working on on this but um yeah it took a while to 
to get it published. So. And how long did it? Is that your first book that you've written? Uh, your first novel yeah. you've written yourself? Did before that attempt? I did attempt another novel prior to that, but and I suppose I completed the first draft. By the time I'd finished the first draft, it, by the time I'd finished it, I was kind of and I didn't think it was really enough in it to to make it worth my while. I I lost interest in it. it didn't feel worth my while trying to you know. Uh, improve on that first draft which wasn't very good so i just left it to one side so it's yeah it's the first that i properly wrote we'll say yeah yeah it is yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and how long did it take you to write that margaret did it take you long to, to put it took together? about two years yeah it took mm -hmm. about two years because i started it on the masters so i was mm -hmm. um so i had that year that was kind of dedicated to writing and then um, after the masters, I was I was just working part time for a while, so I had yeah. that bit of time that I was able to get it finished. So yeah, it took about two years. Yeah, mm. yeah. And it's a great That's achievement cool. when you when you finish, isn't it? It's just it just feels great to have have the finished product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I mean, I think in a way you're never really sure if it is finished. Like if you could do, yeah. you know a little bit more but then you know you can drive yourself mad with it as well you know just leave, leave, yeah. it, leave it for a while um it is great to get it finished very hard to get published um mm. you know and, and that's another that's another thing so yeah yeah and where can people uh get the book it's obviously available available on amazon and do you have it in bookshops yeah. as well yourself yeah it's um so uh, at the moment, it's not on. It's available to order in several bookshops. It's not really on the shelves as yet. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, the publishers have said that in time it it will hopefully become available more in bookshops. But at the moment, it's kind of you can order it from Waterstone, or from one or two other places. But it's um, it's not actually on on their shelves yet. Yeah, but it's yeah. on it's on Amazon. Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can send me the link. Some uh, people, everyone that's listening, yeah, can yeah. pick, pick yeah, up pick yeah. up a copy. Yeah. So that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So that, that's yeah. great. And and how did you find yourself um, through the pandemic with the with your writing? Did you find that affected your your um, your writing, or how 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 was that experience for yourself? Well, um, it was actually so. Um, it was actually during in the first part of the the first lockdown that i am um, started searching so for for this book um in about 2017 i was sending it out to to agents and and i'd listened to um donald ryan in an interview and he said that he'd had 50 rejections before he got his first novel published so mm. I had this kind of aim I thought I'll aim for 50 and if I if I haven't found a publisher by 50 I'll maybe well I didn't know if I'd give up but I thought I'll have a think about it <laughs> and yeah, anyway yeah. I got to about 25 yeah <laughs> so I think I got to about 25 rejections you know I, so I was I was getting a lot of rejections I mean a lot of people don't answer you so I mean with 25 mm. rejections, it means you've probably sent out about 50, which Donald Ryan had said with his as well, that he'd had 50 rejections, but it was really more likely to be 100 because a lot of people don't, don't reply. Um, mm. So I got to about 25 and then just things in my life were kind of hectic. So I just kind of pressed the pause button and I said, I'll, I'll, I can't rejections as well as everything else I'm dealing with at the moment. So I pressed pause and it wasn't really until the first lockdown that I started sending out again so while I wasn't doing much writing during the lockdown I, I started um, submitting the novel again and right. eventually found, found a publisher so yeah so that was yeah that was I suppose not yeah so I wasn't writing but I managed to get something out there so I suppose it was, hmm. it was um, worthwhile but um, yeah but I had a lot of change i suppose during i am um, before six months before the pandemic or before like 
things really got bad. I'd moved to Thailand and I'd started work in Thailand. And then I had to leave Thailand because of the pandemic. And so I went, I was, I was staying in my aunt's house for the first few months. Then I thought I'd be going back to Thailand the following September kind of thing. But um, they told me to wait, that they weren't sure about things yet. And then as you know, the pandemic went on and things got worse before they got better. So mm. I um, I went back down to Tipperary where I'm from and I I went back to my old job, and, but I I didn't have a place to live, you know, so I ended up in a, in a house share kind of thing. Yeah, really difficult. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're not really young anymore, it's, it's makes it, I don't know if it's easy when you're young either, but um, yeah. when you're getting older, it becomes really difficult. And it wasn't mm. a situation where I could be writing in the evening or writing at the weekend so so that wasn't great for me um yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so it, yeah it was just it was a very um it was a time of, and uh yeah so and mm -hmm. yeah and then my aunt got covid and i went to stay with her to, to kind of help her so um she because she became very ill but um yeah so no, it wasn't. It wasn't a time for me to write. <laughs> to be honest. No, no, but, oh, no, yeah, um, no, I know. Yeah, I did get my book out in that time. So yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's a it's a good thing what you're saying there because, um, once you kind of you keep going with it, like you know, you didn't give up. You you kind of utilize the time you had really to um yeah. to, to to persevere and you know not to give up so because like well done to you because it can be hard like when you're getting sending so much letters out for publishers, can't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's very hard it is yeah yeah mm. yeah it is yeah mm. and do you do you have a kind of a um a ske um a schedule you follow with your writing as well do you do you kind of write um no. a certain amount of words a day or what, what way do you do it yourself no <laughs> no i don't i don't um and i spend um i think a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to write before I write it and I'm not one of these people who either has a set time or a set goal um no um uh, when I write I I tend to write in the morning but um yeah no I don't I don't have a set pattern or a set goal what I liked uh before the pandemic I used to like to go to cafes to write I found like well mm, this is nice aside this time and go to a cafe and write and I found that really conducive but then during the pandemic you, you couldn't really do that um, mm. and I haven't really got back into doing that uh, so it's usually when I write it's usually in the morning um, so either before work or yeah if I'm not working you know if I have the day off or whatever in the morning is kind of the best time for me to, to do it and um I don't know. For me, I, I wouldn't really find that helpful because it's not really all about work, you know, because you end up deleting an awful lot of your words anyway. So, um, yeah, so I, I so kind of, um, you know, try to keep it fairly regular because I think and it, it doesn't it loses its momentum so I suppose try to try to um be fairly regular with it but um at the same time not giving myself too hard a time if if um, yeah I don't write for a while um yeah so mm -hmm. I I don't know um I know you're it's a motivational podcast and I don't know if I'm the best person to motivate people because I'm kind of a bit lackadaisical but um yeah but I suppose I still I think I still persevere I suppose I still do keep mm. coming back to it and um, yeah yeah well well but that's motivation itself because everybody has their own way like of 
of doing yeah. it, you know, because because yeah. when it when it, yeah. it gets done, like you've done a novel, so that that's 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 what what more motivation can that yeah. be? So <laughs> yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. true, true, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I suppose uh, you must have had to do a lot of research with your book that you've done. Like the um, uh, how how did you find that? Would like the amount of research you would have had to do with the type of well, book? I, you, see. Not no. really, because I, I lived in Japan for 11 okay. years, so mm. I wasn't, it wasn't really, like, when I, when I wrote about, so it's really not very much about the earthquake, it's about ha what happened to these um, mm. friends, you know, the, the, the course that their lives take, so yeah. I didn't really have to do research much because i had lived in japan for a long time okay i did yeah. find myself looking back on things about the earthquake all right that you would have forgotten mm. um yeah i did but um it was minimal really yeah i i don't i i don't see myself ever writing enough or a lot of research i don't think i i think mm. i'm a bit lazy for that so i think i'll stick to things that are either futurist uh within my my field of experience i suppose i don't see myself um mm. ever I don't, yeah i don't think i'd fancy to do too much research no yeah i'll be i'll be, I'll be with you there with that myself <laughs> i'll be the same i'll be the same, <laughs> be the same. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean i uh, i really i enjoy like historical novels and things reading them but i don't think i'd ever write no and I think that's just that's really hard work, you know. Um, mm, so. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but that's a nice segue into the next question. I was going to ask you, uh, Margaret. Um, what 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 kind of novels or books or or um, authors kind of um, inspired you? And what was your favorite kind of uh, books to read yourself? Um. Well, I read quite widely. I think. Uh, a book that inspired me before before I wrote this novel was, um, you know, the Joy Look Club by Amy Tan. She's oh, yeah, a, yeah. an American author, Chinese American, and so I suppose be, because it took a similar form to to the novel I wrote, and that it was kind of separate stories, um, mm. which linked together to form to form a in in that i think i was a little bit inspired by her or i just remember reading that and thinking oh i think i could do this um mm. so i suppose it has inspired me in in that way yeah 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 um, oh yeah no, that yeah and i think that's great you know because um yeah i always find that like even stories that like i've written my first book as well like about children's book uh children's book so like i suppose like everybody has their different books like because when I, I was a kid i kind of wrote that like um eating eating bloiting and all that kind of stuff that they, they yeah, kind of inspire yeah, you no. like don't they <laughs> the same on there yeah yeah no i loved eating bloiting when i was growing up yeah she was great yeah i read yeah. all the famous five and secret sevens and yeah they're all still at home actually yeah, mm -hmm. they're great books. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't think it occurred to me when I was that small. It never occurred to me to write. So it was like mm. it wasn't until I, like in my early third or I suppose I did. You know, like in school we would have had. You know, we'd have done some writing that, but I don't think it ever occurred to me to write a story. I might do um, until I was older, like you know, mm. early thirties. Kind of think it just didn't really occur to me to do it before then um yeah, yeah. but i think i'd always had stories going around in my head mm -hmm. yeah. like i was always making up stories to entertain myself but it never mm. write them down yeah so mm. yeah, yeah. It, it kind of just comes to you like it just came to you like that's what i found with me myself i had the like something similar you have yeah. these stories that, yeah and you, you decide to yeah. put them down on paper yeah exactly yeah, and uh, have these stories and, and be playing around with them for a while before I would put them down on paper. And I think it was, yeah, um, when like when I was went to 
writing workshops in Tokyo when I was there, I remember the teacher saying to going around in her head in the morning. And I was like, what's she talking about? What does she mean? And I remember waking up one morning and I had the story going around in my head. And I was just kind of enjoying the story before I got out of bed. And then I thought, oh, that's what she's talking about. I'll write this down. And like, it wasn't a story about me. It was like actual, I realized I, I kind of had these, I'd had this all my life, like that I'd ha have characters in my head and I'd be thinking about them. Them, mm. and, you know where they might go and what they might do um yeah but it just hadn't really occurred to me to to write them down yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. and you're glad you're, you're glad you didn't know <laughs> um yeah. you know i'm not sure yeah. we'll see we'll see how it goes yeah. yeah yeah and i don't know i mean do every does everybody have this or is it just some people you know like mm. All people have characters going around in their, in their heads, or is it just yeah, yeah. certain people who end up writing mm. stories that, you know, don't know, can't get yeah, inside other people's heads to, to find out. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point, because I remember I had someone on the podcast before, and they were saying, like, these characters, it was like, it was like when you created them, they kind of came to life, <laughs> they, they can kind of even influence you. In, in 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 the way to write write a story does that make sense yeah Did yeah you point that? yeah 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 they do kind of come to life yeah they do yeah 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 and i mean once once you're right i think i mean they become very real to me anyway as i'm writing them so if somebody says yeah. to me well why they, don't they do it you see i'm thinking just didn't they just wouldn't that's just you yeah. know that's not what they did <laughs> that's not yeah. what they do and you know it's just yeah yes yeah. they do become very real yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They, they won't let you if, if they're not happy with it they won't <laughs> the story won't go that way that's <laughs> it's funny isn't it <laughs> yeah 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 mm. but uh no that, that's great and um yeah, so like, make sure you, you send me your your links to your to your book, so I can put them on the the show notes for people to buy. You know, De definitely, yeah, yeah, I will yeah. indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what's next for you, Margaret? Have you any uh, more uh, books on the way? Have you uh, are you, are you um, working on another novel, or what, what's what's next? <laughs> yeah, I'm just coming to the end of the first draft. Okay. Novel. Um, it's yeah it's going to be a very messy first draft but i'm coming towards the end of it which is good um and after i have finished this i think i'm just going to kind of write some essays and stuff for a while i don't think i'll i'll embark on another novel for a while uh mm. because i i'm busy at work so yeah <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of yeah i think it'd be you just to kind of set myself tasks of writing shorter pieces than, than mm. uh, embarking in another novel. So I have a kind of a vague idea for a third novel, but um, yeah, I'm not going to start on it until it becomes clearer. And um, yeah, what well, I'm working on, so it will need a lot of redrafting before it's mm. before it's decent kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah. That's really the kind of hard part, isn't it, Margaret? The like the the drafts, you know, getting the edited. Like you know, you think you're yeah. like, wow, I've got this yeah. book, and then <laughs> did you did you have yeah. any um, people bad be, like uh, yeah. be, beta readers? Is that what's called? People that read your book and give you yeah. um yeah. How yeah. did you find that? Yeah, well, when because I wrote because I started the the this one because I started yeah. it when I was um writing masters we workshop sections of our you know of whatever we were working on so the first kind of half of the finish before i finished the masters and it was in reasonably good shape because mm. i i'd had to submit you know i chunks of it and that worked quite well for this book i think because because it's written in sections anyway so it's kind of well that section's okay and then and then when I did finish 
through to the end then I, I, I sent it to friends that I made on, on the Masters and I think probably mm. with this novel I'm working that will be the same I'll send it to one or two of them when, when it's de you know this draft will be so messy I'll need to look through it myself before I send yeah. it to anybody else like because some of it probably just won't make sense so once it's kind of probably at the second draft then I might send it on to some um, and, and get and get some feedback from them and, and see where I go from from there yeah that's the plan yeah. anyway yeah. yeah it's great help it's great to get a second opinion because they can pick up the yeah. other stuff second that, or maybe, that maybe will... definitely yeah, yeah because you, if yeah, yeah. Mm. something isn't clear because it's clear to me I might just assume it's clear to the reader that kind of thing so you need even yeah. just for clarity's sake you need you need so um yeah so it might be yeah one or two or even three people that I'll send it to um you see how it goes yeah one or two probably is enough really because yeah you know for first stage anyway yeah yeah no that, that's yeah it's a great plan yeah yeah opposing views either kind of thing you don't yeah, want to get too many kind of too many voices you know you you don't want to get confused Mm, yeah exactly like because i think what can happen is like you know what i find by having different people on the podcast you know you don't want to change the first draft totally because that can take the take the you know your own kind of stamp on it really can't it like that's what i feel yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 and i think you want you want someone to read it who you know likes your writing and your voice, mm. but but will also be honest enough to tell you where you're where you're going wrong and where where things aren't as good as they could be. Like so, so you need honesty, but you also need somebody who does tend to like point and giving it to somebody who who just doesn't like the way you write or something. You know, it's that's um, yeah, that's not going to work either. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. And because you, you mentioned earlier on as well at the start that you um you kind of went to a writers group because I, I find them really really helpful because we, we do one every um Saturday where you work out prompts um was there something similar yeah. with the group you went to yeah 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 I do it's it's very helpful and um I also I um I taught a writing group myself in Clamel um, in I suppose it was 20, 2017, and, and that was actually that was actually really good because I do the exercises myself. So even though I was the teacher, I was also getting the same kind of um, it was getting more benefit from the students because uh, when I with the prompts, I do the prompts too. And if I set homework, well I do the homework as well. And um, so I found that also really helpful as a writer, mm. and I was kind of researching things to to set set them, and and it was beneficial to me as well, kind of thing. So that was very good. Yeah, yeah. I think that definitely that helps, and also can lead. You know, sometimes the prompt will just lead to a paragraph or two, but sometimes mm. it can lead to a longer work or it can feed into something that you're actually working on yourself anyway. It can sort of mm. enrich it somehow or give you a fresh idea for, for the direction to take that. So, yeah, I think that's very useful. Also because writing is a bit solitary, it's nice to have some company when you're doing it. Uh, Definitely. So I used to find um, sometimes even to like meet up in a coffee shop with somebody else who's, who's wanting to write and the two of you decide what well, now we're just going to write but you have that kind of companionship doing it yeah and mm. i found that very very helpful just help you to be yeah and i think strange hobby to have like writing it's not it, it's a bit of a strange hobby to have so it's nice to have yeah. um companions in this definitely who understand what you're going through and who like you know, sometimes when you're searching for the right word and, you know, your sister or your friend or your wife or whatever, and they just mightn't understand why you really want a certain word or you're kind of confused about how you might 
type a certain situation. Whereas if you're talking to somebody else who, who tries to write, then they'll, they'll know what you're getting at. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. Know, exactly. Uh, <laughs> they might. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. makes more sense to them. Which a lot of people, it's not really. Interesting. You know, say, is this the right word for this situation? Or does that really describe it? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, no, they, yeah, that makes perfect sense because even like for uh, we, we write songs together as well. A friend, a friend of mine, like we write some songs, and uh, absolutely, like it's it's a, kind of the same thing because you're you you both understand what you're doing together. Like it's it, it's a you know it's 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 a kind of you both are in the same wavelength with 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 the stuff you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's great. But listen, is there anything else I haven't asked you, Margaret, tonight that you'd like to share with the, the listeners? Any anything you're, you're 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 doing, or have you got a website or anything, anything like that you you want to share with people? So the website is margaretgrantnovelist.com. Okay, great. M A R G A G A R E T Grant G R A N T Novelist.com. Yeah. Great, and, and then yeah, you can find to instagram and facebook on that as well so yeah Quite <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. you can no. find yeah yeah you can find links to instagram and facebook on the on the website and um you can sign up to a newsletter i have a newsletter um which i need to write a, a, another one soon but um Quite. yeah that's there as well so. yeah that's brilliant. Yeah. So you can share them with me on the um send them over by, by email or, or messenger and I can put them on the great. on the show notes yeah. for people to find as well. So listen, Margaret, okay. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's been great talking to you about your work and, and your book looks amazing. Um so thank you so much. Uh so that was Margaret Grant. Everybody, thanks a million for coming on and I wish you all the success going forward with your, your writing as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. So thanks everyone for listening to and watching on YouTube to Mark's Motivational Podcast, another Authors Tuesday with author Margaret Grant. Uh, great, great interview. So uh, stay tuned for next time for our next interview. Take care. Thanks. And good night. Thanks again. Thanks again, Margaret. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Mark here. Thank you for watching another episode of my Authors Tuesday podcast. I recently published a book of children's stories called The Adventures of Larry Lampos and Friends. The book began life as bedtime stories I wrote for my own children. If you'd like to purchase my book, follow the link in the description box below. By buying my book, you are also supporting my podcast series for authors, which is giving a voice to writers in Ireland and across the world.